Welcome to WISC, where we give you a quick peek at the day's top stories. I'm Julia Manchester, in for Jamal Simmons. It was a good election night for Democrats, and we'll discuss the results of the 2019 races and what it might mean for next year. Kim Kardashian tries to help a man on death row. And thousands of scientists declare a climate emergency after President Trump formally pulls out of the Paris Climate Agreement. And this is why you should care. Last night, voters from across the country went to polls to vote in local and statewide elections. It was a big night for Democrats. In Kentucky, Andy Bashir declared victory, taking the governor's mansion from GOP incumbent Matt Bevin, though Bevin has yet to formally concede. And in Virginia, Democrats flipped both the House and the Senate. To talk more with us about the results and the potential impact is The Hill's political reporter, Max Greenwood. Thanks for being here, my friend. Thanks for having me. So to start out with, talk about how big of a deal it is that a Democrat flipped Kentucky from the governor's mansion and talk about how maybe it was in a way an easy feat given, given, given Bevin's unpopularity in the state. Well, it is a big deal because, listen, Kentucky is a state that Donald Trump won in 2016 by about 30 points. 30 points yeah. It is a deeply conservative state. Um, you know, that being said, Matt Bevin went into this as one of the most unpopular governors in the country. He, you know, rolled back the state's Medicare expansion. That was a very unpopular move. Uh, you know, he was engaged in a lengthy fight over pension reform. Uh, you know, and he's kind of been gaff prone to an extent. Right. So going into this, um, you know, he wasn't the most popular governor, even among Republicans. You know, that being said, he tried to run this race, uh, you know, with the frame of supporting Donald Trump. This was about, uh, you know, rejecting Democrats in Washington and throwing some early support to the president. So in that way, it's not a great look for him or, or Donald Trump. Right, and Donald Trump actually held a rally in Kentucky one night before the election. So what are we hearing from the Trump campaign right now? And, you know, how much will this hurt Trump going into 2020? Well, the Trump campaign is, is really trying to distance themselves from this right now. They're trying to downplay how big of a deal this is. Um, you know, they're, they're quick to note that uh, out of the six statewide races in Kentucky last night, uh, Republicans won five of them, and all by larger margins than, than Bevin lost. Uh, so they took a, a larger share of the vote. Um, so, so beyond that, they're really framing this as, listen, Bevin went into this with the disadvantage. You know, a few months ago, he was down 17 points in internal RNC uh, polling data. And with the president coming in at the last minute, it really picked him up. I mean, he, Bevin lost this race by about 5,000 votes, incredibly close margin, less than half a point. Right. And turning into Virginia, we saw huge victories for Democrats. I believe it's the first time since 1993 that they've had control of the governor's mansions and both legislatures in the state. So talk about what Republicans in the state need to do going forward into 2020. You know, Virginia for a while, you know, it's been a, a red state and then kind of shifted, has shifted more purple in recent years. So talk about the political future of Virginia and what Trump needs to do if he wants to win it in 2020. Well, I, I, I think um, it's a long shot that Donald Trump's going to win this in 2020. Yeah. What last night really showed was it cemented Virginia's status as a blue state. Uh, it's a move that we've seen, you know, year after year. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, Democrats haven't held control of the legislature since 1993, so that's a generation. Um, you know, and in the past few years, we've seen them make steady gains in the House of Delegates, in the State Senate, in the Governor's Mansion. You know, but what last night really shows is, is you know, Virginia is solidly in Democrats' right. corner right now. Uh, so I, it's, a, it's gonna be a long shot for Republicans to bounce back in, in 2020. And what we really saw is, is uh, you know, in these suburbs, in the D.C. suburbs, in the Richmond suburbs, yeah. uh, in Hampton Roads, these are areas that shifted, you know, that have shifted for Democrats and are solidly in the Democratic corner. Taking a look ahead in Louisiana, we're seeing that on the 16th they're going to have a gubernatorial runoff, and that's been a bit of a close race between the Republican and Democrat running in that race, and President Trump is holding a rally Wednesday night in Louisiana. So talk about your predictions for that race. Is it going to be a good night for John Bell Edwards, or is it going to be a Republican upset? 
You know, that's a really hard thing to say. I'm not in the business of making predictions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I learned my lesson in 2016. Oh, we, all I think, I think we all did. We all did. You know, that being said, listen, uh, Donald Trump is going to try to do what he does best, which is go into these races at the last minute and lift Republicans up down ballot. So we saw that last month um, with the North Carolina 9 special election between Dan Bishop and, and Dan McCready. Uh, Donald Trump swooped into Fayetteville the night before the election, and uh, we actually saw Dan Bishop make a lot of gains uh, in these, these counties that previously went for Democrats. So, you know, that's kind of what Donald Trump's counting on right now is if he can go to Louisiana at the last minute, um, you know, that might just be enough to, to, you know, pull his party across the finish line. Thank you so much for joining us, Max. All right, thanks, Julia. As Oklahoma commutes the sentences of hundreds of prisoners this week, Texas death row inmate Rodney Reed is set to be executed on November 20th. He was convicted in 1998 for raping and killing 19-year-old Stacy Stites in 1993. According to local reports, the victim's body was found in a rural area outside of Austin, Texas. DNA taken from the crime scene was a match with Reed's. Reed has maintained his innocence all along. His lawyers have said there is evidence that would prove their client didn't murder Stites. That DNA evidence in a new witness statement says that another man, Stites' then fiance, admitted to killing her. That prompted calls from celebrities and lawmakers asking Texas Governor Greg Abbott to stop the execution. Reality star Kim Kardashian tweeted Governor Abbott saying, quote, how can you execute a man when since his trial, substantial evidence that would exonerate Rodney Reed has come forward and even implicated the other person of interest? I urge you to do the right thing. Big names including Rihanna, T.I., Meek Mill, Seth Green, Gigi Hadid, and others also joined in the list of people pushing for an online petition for clemency. 13 Republicans and 13 Democrats and the members of the Texas House Criminal Justice Reform Caucus wrote to the governor asking him to hold off on the execution so that the new evidence could be examined. So why should you care? According to the National Registry of Exonerations in 2018, 151 people were marked as having served time after being wrongly convicted. Some of you may have seen or read about the jaw-dropping crime-turned-Netflix series called Central Park Five. Back in 1990, five teens were wrongly convicted of raping and murdering a 28-year-old white woman in Central Park. The men were eventually acquitted after serving between 6 and 13 years in prison. According to the NAACP, black people make up 13% of the total U.S. population, but make up 42% of those on death row. More than 11,000 researchers from around the globe issued a critical warning Tuesday, declaring a global climate emergency. According to The Hill, scientists wrote in a letter that we are facing, quote, untold human suffering and called on governments to act immediately to combat climate change. The letter, which was originally published in the journal Bioscience, said climate change has arrived and is accelerating faster than many scientists expected. One of the main authors of the letter, William Ripple, an Oregon State Ecology professor, told The Independent, quote, we have continued to conduct business as usual and have failed to address this crisis. Scientists believe there are six major objectives that are essential to fighting climate change. Replacing fossil fuel, cutting pollutants, protecting and restoring ecosystems, lessening meat consumption, building a carbon-free economy, and stabilizing population growth. In their statement, scientists target governments, businesses, and everyday people to make a change. The letter comes a day after President Trump moved to pull the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Agreement. So why should you care? This is similar to the statement published in 2017 by 16,000 global scientists, warning that the world is on a natural collision course. Not much has changed since then, and that is a problem. But not all hope is lost, yet. Experts have some optimism with the rise of renewable energy, declining birth rates, and increased world activism. Thanks for watching Hill TV on YouTube. 
Be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we post new videos. And head to thehill.com for all the latest political news.